Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech, and today Apple released iOS 17.6.1 re-release to the public. iOS 17.6.1 re-release is available around the world at the same time for everyone, as long as you're not already on the previous iOS 17.6.1 version. I'll explain that in just a moment. Also, you won't see this if you're a beta tester on iOS 18 betas, as you're on a newer version. Now this particular update will vary in size depending on which one you've actually installed from, but on the iPhone 12 Pro Max installing from an older update, it was 2.01 gigabytes. This is just a screenshot from this device, and so it will vary in overall size depending on which version you're installing from. Now, Apple also released iPadOS 17.6.1 re-release, watchOS 10.6.1, as well as tvOS 17.6.1. At the time of this video, there's no other beta updates or anything else. Now, let me explain as far as the overall install of this. If you go to your software updates, go to general and then software update, you won't have an update at least at the time of filming this video. They could have changed this by now. However, if you plug this into a Mac or Windows computer, you should see the update. However, you can also download it if you're a developer using the IPSW install file and install it that way. You'll also see it if you're on an older update, such as 17.6 or older. However, I did hear from Miguel of iDevice help that he did see it on his iPhone 11, where it installed from 17.6.1 to a newer version. I wasn't able to confirm that as this is actually on iOS 18 betas. As far as the overall build number, let's take a look at that and then talk about what's new. So we'll go into our settings. We'll go back to general and then about, you'll see the build number is 21G101. This is how you know you're on the latest version. And it only says this update includes improvements and bug fixes for your iPhone. It does not have a modem update. So going from 17.6.1 to the re-release, there's no modem update. However, they did fix an additional feature that they showed us when we try to install it from a Mac. It actually fixes an issue that prevents access to Apple Fitness Plus. So if you're using fitness and maybe you want to go into Fitness Plus and it wasn't working properly, that should be resolved in this particular update. The overall update itself, the previous one fixed an issue that was preventing enabling or disabling advanced data protection. So if you're using that and you have advanced data protection enabled, and that can be found in settings under your name at the top, then if you go to iCloud and scroll to the bottom, advanced data protection was not enabling for some people. So it looks like that's been fixed. We knew that from 17.6.1, but if you were on a previous update, it fixes this as well. Apple has not mentioned any additional bug fixes or anything else. However, I would be curious if you just installed it and you weren't able to use standby, if it will now work for you properly. It's worked for me properly since 17.6 or 17.6.1, and it looks like it's working properly for me. So let's go ahead and put this into sleep mode here. We'll wait for it to go into standby. There we go. We'll press and hold, trying to edit, and then we can go in and edit. Usually the bug was after you edit it a single time, then you try to edit again, it wouldn't work. It looks like it's working properly th this time and compared to the previous time, it doesn't seem to be as buggy. So I would go in here and there were some frame rate issues, some sort of tearing or tearing of this screen and it looks like it's fixed now. So definitely a little bit improved. Let me know if it's working properly for you finally. As far as any other bugs, well, I haven't noticed anything else. If I go in here, the wallpaper dimming bug is still there. It definitely desaturates and everything else seems to be working basically the same. Safari is working fine for me. As far as security updates, Apple hasn't updated this at all. In fact, they added today's updates with watchOS 10.6.1 and you'll see there's no published CVE entries. With 17.6.1 and iPadOS 17.6.1, it's the same thing. There could be a few that they've added that they don't want to share just yet, but as far as anything published, they haven't told us about it. One other thing I wanted to mention is Apple is celebrating America's national parks today. It says with an Apple Pay donation campaign and new ways to explore with Apple Maps. It says today through August 25th, Apple will donate $10 to the National Park Foundation for each purchase made through Apple using Apple Pay. That's probably going to be an awful lot of money as people are buying different things for school and more. And either way, they're celebrating this starting today through the 25th, along with different fitness challenges and more. Now, Apple did update a couple other things I wanted to mention. The first one has to do with their sports app, where they actually added the NFL season with Apple Sports. So you can follow your favorite team that's now available if you're using the sports app. And you'll see there's a new splash screen. We'll tap continue, and then you can pick any leagues that you want when it comes to NFL. So if we scroll down, we have NFL here, and then we can add those, see upcoming games and more. 
Another thing they updated has to do with Apple podcasts. They actually made this available on the web today. Now the latest update for podcasts on the web doesn't show on the iPhone or iPad as it brings you right into the podcasting app. However, if you go to it on a Mac or on windows, you'll actually have a new podcast interface where you can actually follow all of your favorite podcasts, listen to them there and more. So that's available as of today. Now, as far as the overall performance of 17.6.1 re-release, I would not expect any difference compared to the prior version. Some people did have some issues with stuttering, with Safari loading, and just scrolling in general, but overall it seems to be nice and fast. Additionally, the overall heat of the device seems to be very well managed on this 15 plus since I have the other phones on 18 betas. This is nice and cool, and I'll show you that a little bit later with benchmarks. When it comes to the battery life, that takes a few days to know for sure, so we'll have to give it a few days and talk about it in the weekend follow-up. But if we go into our battery, we'll go to battery health. This device is at 100% with only 12 cycles since I used it for about a week or so, but today it's only been used one hour and 25 minutes and I'm down to 66%. However, it was not charged to 100%. It was only charged to about 67 to 70% and I installed the update. But again, we'll have to see how this does after the next few days, but overall, thanks to many viewers who sent in their battery life, it seems like the previous version of 17.6.1 was pretty phenomenal as far as that goes. When it comes to the next releases, while we didn't expect a re-release, we actually expected iOS 17.6.2, and that technically had a different build number according to the leak on 9to5Mac and Mac rumors. So we could see another update, we don't really know, but at this point I'm kind of doubting that. We could see an iOS 17.7 as well, but I would expect that in September if we see that. As far as the next versions of iOS 18 with iOS 18 beta 7 and public beta 5, well at this point, Let's go into the calendar here. I would expect that probably sometime tomorrow, possibly later today, but probably tomorrow or Wednesday with iOS 18.1 beta three releasing maybe next week. We don't really know if we're on a bi-weekly schedule at this point, but we could see that as soon as next week. So we've got a lot to look forward to as well as probably next week, we'll see the invites to the Apple event for the iPhone 16, 16 plus 16 pro and 16 pro max. So a lot to look forward to. As far as overall benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look. And I ran these not too long ago, but if we go into the history, you'll see it scored 2,583 for single core, 6,293 for multi-core. If we compare that to the previous one, this was on iOS 17.6.1, but the first release, it has a much better multi-core score, about by 500 points or so. So definitely an improvement there. And this is right after installing it. So hopefully we see some performance improvements for those that were having stutters and issues. I'd love to hear from you as far as the overall experience and if you've installed this one yet or if you're running iOS 18 betas. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.